runs down the field alone without a defender 10 yards in any direction. If you watch Kyle Shanahan's offense on a week-to-week -week basis, no other coach schemes his receivers wide open at such a high rate. Whether it's tight end George Kittle running double moves, fullback Kyle Juszczyk running fake sift blocks on play action to the flat, or a running back like Raheem Mostert running free on a wheel route, the 49ers receivers are consistently put in position to make big-time plays. As the team headed to New Orleans to take on the Saints in Week 14, Shanahan knew he had his work cut out for him. With two top five scoring offenses heading into battle, he trusted his scheme and added a little razzle-dazzle. Each and every week, his game plans consistently revolve around three pillars, tendency breakers, self-scouting, and pass-run ambiguity. His first pillar is tendency breakers. Shanahan is excellent at modifying the plays that he calls frequently. To illustrate that, I'll use an example that I've broken down on this channel before and put some links in the description box below. This is a variation of the burner concept, which has long been a Shanahan staple. It's a form of play action flood and pops up all over the film, even back in his days with Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, and the Falcons in 2016. Burner is a three receiver play action pass designed to attack the deep, intermediate, and underneath levels of the defense. Many NFL defenses base coverage is covered three zone, the very coverage the burner concept is designed to attack. The detached receiver will run deep to clear out the cornerback and safety, while a second receiver will run a deep cross or sail route to attack the intermediate zone, and a third receiver will run to the flat. Since the receiver has cleared out the coverage, the concept is designed to conflict the curl flat linebacker who is caught guarding two players. If he sinks back to the deep cross, the flat route will be open. If the linebacker races up to cover the flat, the cross will slip in over the top. The first receiver's primary goal is to clear out the coverage by running deep. Usually, Shanahan calls this the burner route, where the receiver is coached to run 15 yards to the post, then break back outside to the corner. Shanahan knows defenses have studied him on film. To switch up his offensive tendencies, he uses the same burner concept, but changes the burner route to fool the defense. He wants the defense to think he's doing what he's done for years, but instead, Kittle will run a rage route, which at first looks like the burner route, then turns into a corner post to the middle of the field. You can see the Packers have studied film and crafted a game plan to cut the number two receiver on the deep cross, but this opens the middle of the field. Kittle's rage route completely annihilates the cornerback. The defense was so certain they were defending the burner concept, Kittle had more open space than a Dolphins fan in the bleachers. The Saints knew they needed a plan against burner, and coming to the line, it looked like the 49ers were dialing it up. Trailing 20-7 early in the second quarter, Shanahan and Garoppolo knew they needed to be aggressive to match the Saints' explosive offense, so they called a similar play from the Packers game. Running back Tevin Coleman is going to run to the flat, wide receiver Debo Samuel will run the deep cross, and Emmanuel Sanders will start with what looks like the burner route, then cut back to the middle. The Saints' defensive philosophy revolves around two high safety coverages. You can run almost anything with two high, cover two, cover four, cover six, to name a few, but they generally stick to cover two or quarters concepts with cornerback Marcus Lattimore usually shadowing his assignment and man no matter what. Here, they are running quarters coverage, which means they'll position four defenders deep. But as they often do, Lattimore shadows his man, so they're really running a combination quarters coverage. The nickel corner will take Coleman to the flat, the field corner will release Sanders deep to the safety and sit for Samuel's deep cross, while the strong safety will cover Sanders. The two high structure works well against the corner post rage route. Safety Von Bell jumps Sanders' route to the corner, which he thinks is burner. But just like the previous play, Sanders breaks back Back to the middle of the field. The free safety Marcus Williams picks him up and carries him deep. The moment Garoppolo sees Sanders stem inside of Bell, he unleashes a 55-yard bomb. Williams is in position, but Sanders puts some magic on him. Williams kind of looks like someone learning to snowboard for the first time and falls over. Sanders gathers himself, breaks a few tackles, and takes it the rest of the way. The second pillar of Shanahan's game plans is his ability to self-scout. He masterfully predicts plays his opponent is going to key in on during film study, then tweaks those plays to deceive the defense. He knows the Saints are studying how the 49ers have played the division rival Panthers, and he knows they have a reel of explosive plays on repeat while preparing their weekly game plan. Was this a crazy trick play? Sure, but the play worked because the defense got stuck in the trap. 
Let's go back to week eight. This is another play I broke down in a previous episode, which is also down below, and probably the reason the Saints thought they recognized it. Earlier in the game, the 49ers had called several plays to set up this Debo Samuel run through the middle. They're running single wing back trap, or what some refer to as dart. Let's focus on the receiver motion pre-snap. The three receivers are bunched to the left, and Sanders begins to motion across the formation. The left guard is going to pull to trap the defensive end, and Samuel will cut through the heart of the defense and break up field for a touchdown. This is the play Shanahan knew the Saints would ultimately key in on, so he devised a trick play to capitalize. At the beginning of Week 14's game, the Saints recognize the receivers are in a similar bunch. They see Sanders motion across the formation towards where Samuel will get the ball. Shanahan wants them to recognize similar movements they've studied on film. The 49ers pull a guard to trap the same side Samuel is running just like against the Panthers. If the Saints think they are seeing the same concept they studied from six weeks ago, they're doomed. The defense crashes and sets a hard edge. The Mike linebacker flies through to catch Samuel, but isn't expecting Sanders to come back across on the reverse. The linebacker still stays hot on his tail, and then Sanders makes an absolutely insane throw off his back foot and hits running back Raheem Mostert up the sideline for a house call. The third pillar, and really the foundation of Shanahan's offense, is how he creates run-pass ambiguity. His system is designed to make running plays and play-action concepts look nearly identical, which is mortifying for the defense. The more they pursue their gaps in the run game, the more out of position they are against play-action. This is a split zone run concept, which is perfect for their system. Split zone is an inside or outside zone run with a sift block coming across the formation. A sift block is a fullback or tight end who comes across the formation to kick out the unblocked defender on the end of the line of scrimmage. This is designed to split the defense and create a crease on the backside. This play is called 18 support F sift. The F tight end Ross Dwelly will sift across the formation and kick out the defensive end. End. The rest of the line will zone block to the right, which forces the defense to move laterally to maintain gap integrity. Leaving the defensive end for the tight end to sift block allows the offensive line to gain a numbers advantage to the front side, while creating advantageous blocking angles at the point of attack. The more effective the ground game, the more sharply the play action pierces the defense. Down 30-28 in the third quarter, the 49ers use play action off of their split zone on back-to-back -back plays. The beginning of the play looks exactly Exactly like 18 support F sift. The linemen fire off the ball zone blocking to the right, while Kyle Juszczyk fakes the sift block and flies to the flat. When the play action looks identical before the mesh point, that's when you know the defense is in trouble. The offense is in a heavy 22 personnel, two running backs, and two tight ends. But instead of lining up in the backfield, Juszczyk is on the end of the formation as the third tight end. The Saints have to respect the possibility of a run because of all the beef the 49ers have on the line of scrimmage. At the snap, just like 18 support F sift, Juszczyk will kick out the unblocked defensive end, while tight ends Garrett Selleck and Kittle begin to block play side. But, instead of blocking, they spin out and run routes. What makes the play so effective is defensive end Cam Jordan has no idea if Juszczyk is about to blow out his knees or speed pass him to the flat. He and safety Von Bell are the only defenders to that side of the field. If Juszczyk does sift block Jordan, Bell has to fill that gap on a split zone run. When Garoppolo comes out of the play fake, the flat is left wide open for Juszczyk and an easy first down. The very next play, using the same personnel, they mix up the formation by putting Juszczyk in motion, then Kittle coming across on the fake sift block and slipping into the flat for a touchdown. Though the formation is different, the concept is the same, and the defense comes nowhere near slowing it down. With the entire offensive line going to the right and Garoppolo turning to his right to hand off to the running back, the defense absolutely has to respect the run action and come downhill quickly to fit their gaps and run support. They flip the end Cam Jordan to the other side and place linebacker Stephon Anthony, who is lighter and quicker, to maybe slow down the receiver coming across the formation. But Anthony comes as close to stopping Kittle as I am to making it to the league. What really gets me going about Shanahan's offense is how he blends his concepts. This play actually has a burner concept built into it, even from the five yard line. Juszczyk is running the clear out route, Sanders comes over the middle on the deep cross, and Kittle quickly sneaks out to the flat. The curl flat linebacker isn't even in position to get high load because he's still trying to figure out who has the ball and where he's supposed to go. This 49ers Saints game was an absolute 
fireworks show. Both Sean Payton and Kyle Shanahan used every last page in their playbooks, battling down to the very last second. But Shanahan showed he had just a little bit more. The 49ers have proven they can win every possible way, whether it be a 48-46 shootout against the Saints, a grinded out 9-0 victory against the Redskins in the pouring rain, or a 37-8 blowout of the Packers on primetime. Every week, Shanahan creates game plans using his three pillars, tendency breakers, self-scouting, and pass run ambiguity. When he fits them all together, he makes the 49ers offense explode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please like and subscribe and throw a comment down below. If you want to support the channel and want to learn more about the game of football, click on the link to my Patreon page where I detail plays in the upcoming episode. I have a few 49ers playbooks from the last five years, and I post plays that I'm going to detail in the following episode. The Big Five picks against the spread at another winning week. That's six for six weeks of winning. We went three and two on last week's slate. If you want to unlock access to those picks, all you have to do is make a donation and we can share those winnings together. I know fantasy is starting to wind down. Hopefully you've got a few teams in the playoffs and you're still going. I also offer fantasy advice on Patreon as well. It's really an all-in-one kind of a deal and just trying to show how much I appreciate the support. I'm looking forward to next week's episode. They come out every Saturday morning. So yeah, that's all I got. Until then, see ya.